Previously, I've shown how to make flashing lights like those on top of the blue Volvo here using the S brick. In this video, instead of the lights on top, I'm going to show how to make turn indicators again using the S brick as shown here on the white truck. So let's assume we are turning to one side here. Then, when we are steering to that side and completing our turn, steering back again, you can see the light goes out. It also goes out here on the screen. The same on the other side. Turning left, steering to the left, straight again, and turns off. And of course, there's also emergency indicators like this. Now, let's take a look at the SBRIC design in order to see how this is set up. First, I want to find out how to make the sequence. So, in this special profile, I made three different kinds of sequences. They are all just taking one of the turn indicators, turning it on and off in these kind of sequences. First, I have this one where I'm using slope transitions inside of the sequence editor. You can see it's two seconds long, and each time the light is on, it's on for approximately half a second. Now I'm starting at zero, going up to one, so full power. Full power like again it should be, so this one has to be one instead of 0 0.9. Back to zero, zero, one. Again, I swear this was at one last time I edited. So I don't know why it would change, but one one zero zero like this, and let's save the profile so it is correct with the values. The other two sequences, the blue and the yellow one, have these non-slope transitions, and this one that starts at zero, not one. You can see that. It's simply set up like this. So here we have the values 0 and 1 after a half a second where we have the transitions. And for the last one, it's simply swapped. So it starts at 1 instead of 0. And that is because I have seen that, or I would like to see how the sequence behave once we get from the end of a sequence and to the start of the same sequence again. As you can see, I'm jumping from 0 to 1. And I want to make sure that it doesn't make any kind of silly jumps in the, the intensity of the light. The same up here. So I'm going to test this out on the truck now and also see what works the best. So let's save this sequence or this profile and look at what it looks like on the truck. First, let's look, take a look at the sloped one. This is similar to what I'm using on the blue truck. And as you can see now, it doesn't change from 0 to 1 because often it hits the slope. So you can see it has those gradual transitions and that's not what we want to have for a turn signal. So that's no good. Now the one where we start at 0, on, off, on, off, that looks quite okay. I would say that looks like a turn indicator. And finally, the one that starts at 1. If we are turning it off and then on, you can see it turns on immediately. And that also seems to work quite okay. So which of these two should we use? Well, the one that starts at zero has a delay before it starts. But if you turn on a turn indicator in real life, it would turn on immediately. So we should use the yellow sequence down here. So testing done. I think we should use this yellow one and let's set up the big profile now. Here we have the big main profile. I got two sequences down here for the turn indicators and one for the emergency indicator. So those two for the turn indicators are sequences just as you saw before, where they go from one to zero and with a half a second change and we are starting at one. That's the same for both the left and the right one. And the one where we have them both is called both. It is red. And as you can see, I've simply added a channel in order to do the same for both left and right. So it is quite simple. So everything in here is very simple. We got our accelerator and our steering, as I've shown in previous videos, extremely simple to set up. And we have these three sequences. Now, the logic that you saw that turned off an indicator once I stopped steering to that side, that comes from the circuits. 
Now I got a blink right and blink left. Let's just look at the right because the left is very similar. In here, the blink right, I'm saying that I want to depend on the steering, that is my input, and the logic that happens is an event. And actually, if you look at the uh, logic box down here, it even tells you how to set up this for the turn indicators. And let's see. Why doesn't it say anything? Now it does. Hmm. Okay, so it has to be empty first. So yes, first we have our events that I want to use. But why do I want to use event? Isn't there something else? Well, let's take a look at those. The linear thing, it says I can make a function where I'm using input and then A and B in order to make the target channel do something. But I can't really use that for turn indicators. So on change, that is something if I change from a value to another value, either by increasing or decreasing some threshold, then some channel is turned on or off. I can't really use that either because I don't know how much I'm going to turn. So at transform, well, that is used for, see as an example down here, reversing light. So if I'm within some limit, then I can turn a channel on, like left right acceleration or steering, and say how much it should be. But I can't really use that for turn indicators either, so that's why I'm using the transform. And you can read down here what I have to do, it pretty much tells me everything. So what it says is that I need to set these limits. The upper one to 1, close circuit that one, the lower one to 0 0.2, close that one. Say that my, this is the blink right, so that is the right sequence group I'm turning on. And on, it should be on when I'm going into this, and it should be off when I'm going out. And I'm just doing what it says down here in the tooltip for the events. So that's quite easy. The one for the left is quite similar. It's just again following the sequence or the uh, text down here said that upper should be minus 0 0.2 and lower minus 1. You can see it runs on the left, on, off, and these are both closed. And then that's it. So I can save this sequence and then we can see how it works on the truck. Now back to the truck. So I want to turn right. I'm turning on my indicators first, starting to drive into my turn. And once I finish my turn and turning the steering off, you can see the light goes off. So that works as it should. And the same you can see if I'm just turning by myself without actually turning the indicators on first, they will also turn on. And that is because of how this is set up inside of the logic circuits. Can't really make it better than that, unfortunately. At least not with the current version. Now, often in traffic you will see that when we want to put our trailer somewhere and we're taking up the whole road with our trucks, then we will turn on the emergency lights. But if I do that, I can just go a bit back and forth and they will still be running. But as soon as I start steering, you can see the logic takes over and starts using just the turn indicators for that side and for the other side. So that is a bit unfortunate, but we can't really do any better right now unless you have a better idea at least. So either you have to live with this or not use those kind of circuits. Now, there's also a, another thing you can see in this truck and that is I actually had space enough to have lights on the back. So right now you can see the uh, normal red lights are on, but 
both of the children indicators work as well. And that is something that you can just get out of a normal desk brick if you're using it on a tractor like this DAF XF. And now we turned the trailer for itself so you can just drive around. Here you can see, and the reason why it's so fast compared to the truck that you saw for the buy and last is that we currently have two motors instead of one. So it is like twice as fast but has the same amount of power as the truck from before. And that is how to create turn indicators using an S-brick. Thank you!